Okay, so as I'm taking part in the G-Skill Overclocking World Cup competition that's currently being held in the qualifier phase at hardwarebot.org and the event will finalize in the live stage during Computex of this year. I wanted to upgrade my RAM LN2 container and also partially due to my own interest. So I decided to purchase the Bitspower RAM LN2 container that has been around for some time already on the Bitspower uh, website. It has its plus and minus sides compared to the more standard RAM LN2 containers and I really would like to share my inside views and thoughts about this container and their heatsink designs compared to the other alternatives on the market. I already covered the heatsinks themselves some time ago already. I really like how they are being mounted. Their tightening uh, is pretty sophisticated when you use that small uh, spacer between the two memory plates so you can get very precise like mount between the two memory heatsink plates. But there are also some clear minus sides about those uh, heatsinks I wanted to uh, bring to light on this video. So uh, first of all the plus sides of this uh, RAM LN2 container. Uh, it's a little bit more narrow compared to the uh, Barked Honeycomb RAM LN2 container. Up until now I've mainly used the Barked Honeycomb LN2 container for everything. It uh, uses the very standard a Corsair Dominator mounting system that has been around for like 15 years already or so. So it's very versatile. It means you can use this kind of RAM LN2 container with every single memory generation pretty much from DDR2 days up until DDR5. The good thing that this is a bit more narrow than the Barked Honeycomb RAM LN2 container is that if you have seen my setup and I'm sure you have seen my setup many many times on my videos the space that I have between, between my CPU LN2 container and the 240 water cooling radiator that's uh, hanging in the air is pretty uh, tight. So uh, I can use the Barked Honeycomb RAM LN2 container over there, but pretty barely. So I cannot use any like real insulation or it's very hard to get the whole thing installed together on my bench table. So uh, with the honeycomb I can only use like electrical tape around the uh, container to hold the thermocouple probe in place, but that's pretty much it. So uh, I really like that the bits power container is a bit more narrow. Nowadays with the high-end overclocking motherboards like the Apex, Dark Kimpin, Tachyon, Aqua OC, etc. We don't really need very wide RAM LN2 container. The opposite to this one would be the original SF3D triple point uh, container that was designed by SF3D and Riba from Poland I mean. That one can actually support triple channel memory and the same thing goes for the Kimping Cooling Dominance container. Second feature what I really like about this container is that it's very tall. Tall design means that it's very easy for pouring. Especially when the LN2 container starts to get glazed over time during your session as the RAM containers are very small so they don't have much mass. Once they are glazed it can happen like over time on its own or when you use a heat gun or a blowtorch on the container the surface of the internal structure gets covered in ice that makes the pot a lot faster but when you pour LN2 on the RAM container it just splashes all over the place and cools down instantly pretty much. The biggest annoying thing is that it just jumps out from the container. So a tall design like this really makes the pouring a lot more easier when uh, it doesn't jump out of the container so easily. So that's a very good thing I really like about the Beats Power. LN2 cooling container. So uh, I will be trying it. I don't know why they left the base of the uh, container at bare copper. The plus side would be that copper has better like thermal characteristics than nickel. So usually copper containers are nickel plated to make them uh, last longer. So if you already know I guess copper does oxidize over time and when you use these containers on LN2, so below zero and they get exposed to water, they really start to oxidize uh, quite quickly. So uh, if I was designing this container, I would have plated the bottom side of the container with nickel as well. If you do it 
uh, well. So if you only use a very thin layer, it doesn't really harm the uh, uh, thermal characteristics at all, or it doesn't really have much impact anyways. So that's pretty much it for the container. So uh, it's uh, pretty good. So the design is very, very good. But the minus part is that you cannot use this container with older memory generations like DDR3 and DDR2. I really would like to try this container with DDR3 as well. But the thing is that you can't really use the bits power heat sinks with those older memory uh, generations. And I can really explain uh, why. So. Uh, they do have, so Bits Power does list two different types of heat sinks on their website. So they have both the aluminium and copper uh, alternatives. And they have uh, heat sinks for both dual rank and single rank uh, memory sticks. I purchased both the dual rank and single rank heat sinks with this container. So uh, those two over there are for the dual rank DDR5 memory sticks. I would like to try them if I decide to buy some. Hynix ADI dual rank memory sticks at some point in the very near future. I would like to try some of those on LN2 as well, if they perform at least reasonably well on ambient based cooling. So I have, st I have the spare single rank uh, heat sinks over here in this box over, over here on the table. So you can see they are over there. But uh, the thing about these heat sinks, first of all, the way they are designed is that they have the uh, uh, memory IC contact point like very close to the uh, bottom part of the heatsink. So they are really designed for DDR5 and if you remember the uh, newer DDR4 design, so the A2PCB. That one had the IC, so the memory chips much closer to the bottom part of the memory sticks PCB. So very close to the golden contact pads of the memory stick. So you can see it over here pretty much. So. Uh, you can see the uh, PMIC would go over here and then the uh, spot that gets connected with the memory ICs themselves, it's actually pretty close to the bottom side of the heatsink already. So uh, that pretty much means that you can really mount a DDR3 stick well with this one. So the memory ICs would like hang over the contact area more towards the center of the uh, memory cooling plate. So I don't know if you could actually modify it with uh, some thermal pads. I don't know. I have to uh, discuss about this with the bits power guys, but we'll see. The second thing, what I really don't like about this uh, heating design is that it doesn't provide very even temperature across the entire memory stick. So uh, for single rank memory sticks, the design is fine. But even on their guide booklet, where they give you instructions how to uh, install these memory heat sinks, they already uh, do one thing wrong. I really would like to uh, tell you about, and I already mentioned it on my previous video about these heat sinks. So on the Beats Power heat sinks, only one of the plates gets direct contact with the uh, container itself. And that's really a minus part, especially if we talk about running memories at full pot temperatures on LN2 and that was the case with DDR3 power chip based DDR3 memories and especially like uh, uh, LPDA PPSC based memories when you really push the memories to very cold temperatures you need to have even temperatures across the entire memory stick so you want to have the maximum temperature on every single memory IC that's present on the memory sticks PCB so if a DDR3 power chip based uh, stick has 16 memory chips you want each of those memory chips running at minus 190 degrees celsius so uh, on this design this plate gets direct contact with the uh, uh, ln2 container so you just use thermal paste on the top part and you get very good temperatures on this memory cooling plate over here on the instruction guide they actually recommend you to install the back side of the single rank memory stick onto this plate, which is actually uh, the colder plate of the two, and then put the ICs facing towards this cooling plate over here. And the big annoying part about this heatsink design is that there's no like very good thermal transfer or contact between the two plates over here. So when you actually install the heatsink together, so on, on the memory stick, 
So if we just place this like so over here, this is how it would look like, like roughly when it's installed. So it doesn't make like proper contact on uh, the other plate over here. There's actually a small gap between the two uh, plates all, uh, all across this line over here. So it doesn't make like proper uh, contact. If it did, you could use like thermal paste between the two plates and get adequate cooling on the second plate as well. When you uh, look at this part very carefully, you would think that it does make somewhat good contact on this line over here. But when you use the spacer on these three holes over here, if you use a bit more distance, that also means that there's no uh, thermal, like proper thermal contact at all between the two cooling plates. So the only way the second plate actually gets the cold temperatures of the LN2 from the container is through the memory stick itself. So the, uh, if we talk about dual rank memory overclocking on LN2, this could mean that this plate runs at minus 190 degrees Celsius and the second plate will run effectively at warmer temperatures. That might not be of an issue with memory because memories don't really uh, use that much power. They really have very low like power consumption. So uh, the temperature difference might not be that high, but it still, it still could be a problem. I did see this myself with PowerChip based DDR3 memories. If the temperature delta between uh, one or two memory, st memory sticks, or if there's a clear temperature delta between the individual ICs on the very same stick, it could actually cause some instability and you might not be able to reach the very best like frequencies and timings you are looking for. So uh, this design should be changed for uh, dual rank memory overclocking. So for single rank it's, it's fine because when you just face the uh, ICs of the single rank memory stick onto this uh, plate that certainly has the uh, cold temperatures of the LN2 from the container, it doesn't really make that much of a difference because uh, the second plate will only have the uh, PCB of the memory stick, so it doesn't really have to be at best possible temperatures. So uh, this is something I need to discuss about with the Bits Power guys, so we'll see what happens. So I would like them to change this design a little bit. A good example of how this should be done is the Barks DDR3 heatsinks that were specifically made for uh, power chip based uh, memories when aiming for full watt temperatures. So if you take a look at this uh, memory stick over here, that's one of my Patriot Wiper 2 uh, Sector 5s, 2500 uh, Cas9 sticks. So over here on the Barks heatsink, we can see there are just three very basic uh, bolts that go through the uh, second memory heatsink plate. But over here, we can actually see that there's proper like thermal contact between the two cooling plates over here. So it starts over here, it goes all the way over here and ends over here. And one thing also that's very important is that on the box heatsink design, both of the cooling plates actually make direct contact with the container itself. So this kind of design is much better for dual rank memory stick on LN2. So with this design we can be absolutely sure that both sides of the memory stick will have roughly the same temperatures. So if we got the stick down to minus 190 we can be sure that the memory I see over here on this side of the memory stick will run at minus 190 and the same story would be over here on the uh, other side of the memory stick on the opposite side. So uh, that's really the best possible solution for a dual rank memory stick on LN2 at full pot temperatures. This design had very good like pressure on the memory stick itself but you cannot make such fine-tuned adjustments just like on the Bits Power heatsink uh, design. So that's really the best part about the Bits Power heatsinks that you can actually make very fine-tuned uh, adjustments on the cooling plates, like how tight they mount against each other and how tight mounting pressure the memory stick actually has. Mounting pressure has been an issue with memory uh, heatsinks for a very long time. If you remember the EK SF3D uh, memory heatsinks for LN2, they had very poor mounting pressure. So when you actually 
removed the memory sticks from the uh, motherboard, you could easily rip off the heat sinks from the uh, memory sticks if you only use thermal paste between the uh, memory chips themselves and the memory heat sinks. That's why it's actually a lot more idiot proof way to uh, mount custom heat sinks onto memory sticks by using a thermal pad instead of thermal paste. Thermal paste is, at least in theory, much better because it's a much thinner layer and thermal paste usually has better like thermal performance than thermal pad. But if the uh, as parts shrink when temperatures go very cold, it could actually happen that you lose the best possible uh, thermal contact on some specific memory chip and then the contact is still uh, good on some other memory chip. So it could actually uh, make some uh, differences on uh, the temperature between individual memory chips on the, mem on the very same memory stick. So I think it's a lot more idiot proof way to get even temperatures across all of the uh, memory ICs that are present on the memory sticks PCB by using a thermal pad instead of thermal paste I mean. So I will be using these now with the uh, G-Skill Trident Z uh, kits I've been buying over the last few weeks or so. Beats Power actually upgraded the uh, thermal pad solution with, I mean, for these uh, heat sinks. The original ones were just fine, so here are the original ones. But the negative side of these thermal pads was that they actually get damaged very quickly once you use them for a few times on LN2. So they actually changed the thermal pads altogether, and these should be the new ones. I will use these new ones straight away and I'll try to see how they perform uh, on LN2 compared to these, these ones over here. These should last a lot longer based on the information I got from Bits Power. So we'll see. So uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it about the Bits Power RAM LN2 container. The container itself is amazing. I really like the design. It has a uh, good like internal structure. It has uh, pretty much the same cooling performance I would assume as the Barked Honeycomb, it has very tall extension over here and it's quite narrow. I really like it, but the heat sinks, they aren't perfect. They, they have some very good features, but they aren't perfect. For single rank memory stick overclocking, they are good, but for dual rank, they really should have some uh, changes on the heat sink design. That's at least something I wanted to mention. Price-wise, the Beats Power solution isn't very cheap. I think I paid around like 300 euros in total for everything for the container, the dual rank heat sinks plus for the spare single rank memory heat sinks with shipping and value added tax on top of everything at the customs. So uh, the overall uh, cost is quite high. So that's why it's very hard to say that should you just buy the Beats Power container and the heat sinks for everything because you cannot really use these for the older generations as well if you really want to test some memory overclocking with Ivy Bridge or Haspel as well for example that's actually a lot of fun you should try it out yourself at some point so uh, if you do it like me so you have for example the Bits Power RAM LN2 container with their heat sinks and then another set for older platforms so for example the Barked Honeycomb with Barked heat sinks the overall cost can actually be quite high. So, I mean, just for memory LN2 cooling. But yeah, that's really uh, about it. So, uh, what do you think about this uh, container and the heat sinks? Do you share my opinions about the heat sink design? Should they make those changes what I mentioned on this video? Please let me know and drop a comment down below this video and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Maybe check out my Patreon page as well if you want to support my work. And yeah, thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.